Hey everyone, I'm Rick Beato. On today's Everything Music, we're going to have the introduction to polyrhythms. Now we've talked a little bit about polyrhythms in the past, particularly three against two patterns. But what we're going to talk about today is three against two, four against three, and five against four. I'm going to demonstrate them on the drums and on the piano using the two different hands to, to accomplish the polyrhythms. Let's get started. Now this is my first video on rhythms that I've done. I've kind of wanted to present some uh, harmonic information to get a basis on this, but I'm going to talk about how to use it in a melodic context, not just in, in a rhythmic drumming context, for example. The first thing I like to do is to talk about note value and subdivision. Now most of you already know this, but I want to just kind of go over this really quickly because we're gonna be talking about different subdivisions. So here I have a four, four bar divided up into different subdivisions. Okay, so we have a whole note, which of course is worth four beats, half notes are worth two beats each, quarter notes are worth one beat, then you have the quarter note triplet is the next. So I'm going in increasing uh, rapidity, so, so the, these, these note values get faster and faster as we go along. The next I have are eighth notes, okay, which are, you know, obviously there's eight eighth notes in a bar, then we have eighth note triplets come next. Then we have 16th notes. Then we have five note groupings, six note groupings, which would be sextuplets. So the five note groupings are quintuplets, sextuplets, and then septuplets, seven note groupings. Okay, so four of those would equal, equal one bar. So let's take a listen to what this sounds like on drums. So the first thing you're gonna hear is a snare pattern playing through all the different permutations, starting from quarter notes. I started at quarter notes, I didn't do whole notes and half notes, but this is with a quarter note kick drum. I start off with a click. The snare will start off playing quarter notes, then quarter note triplets, then eighth notes, then eighth note triplets, then sixteenth notes, then five note groupings, then six note groupings, and seven note groupings, and then it, it'll end with thirty second notes. Check it out. Okay, next I'd like to play you what is called a linear drum pattern. Linear patterns are drum patterns that only have one note playing at once. So only one limb is playing a drum at once. There's nothing, there's no doubles up until the last, I have a crash and kick at the end. But linear patterns are something that a very famous drum teacher from Berkeley named Gary Chafee, who was the drum instructor, oh boy, back from the 70s all the way through the 80s at Berkeley uh, when I was at New England Conservatory, he taught Vinnie Caliuta, Steve Smith, and he has a great series of books on, uh, on dr drumming, drum patterns, on polyrhythms, all these different things. And he likes to talk about linear patterns. And like I said, a linear pattern is simply where one limb is playing one hit at a time. Here's an example of some linear patterns from one of Gary's books. So this is a linear drum pattern of the same exercise, going quarter notes, quarter note triplets, eighth notes, eighth note triplets, and so on and so forth. Check it out. So that's a linear pattern going progressively through the different rhythm patterns, starting on quarter notes and going to 30 second notes. Okay, next I'd like to play you the same rhythmic pattern going through starting with quarter notes all the way through 30 second notes, but I'm doing them with an improvisation over a C Dorian scale. And it sounds like this.
Okay, we're gonna move on now to polyrhythms. Now polyrhythms, in this case, are gonna be two different rhythms in two different hands, okay? So I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna do in the first measure, a three against two pattern. The second bar is gonna be four against three. And the third bar is gonna be five against four. Those are your typical polyrhythmic patterns, okay? So you're basically superimposing two different rhythm structures on top of one another. And in this case, we're doing it in C Dorian again. So here's what it sounds like. Here's what it sounds like with a string pad behind it. Okay, next I'm going to start with the same polyrhythms, the three against two pattern, followed by the four against three, followed by the five against four. But these are going to be done between the kick and the snare. So it's a little tricky. Now check it out. I'm going to be moving on to some more sophisticated videos on rhythm and how to use them in your orchestrations. But what I first want you to do is to internalize some of these polyrhythms. Now there's a very easy exercise you can do. Some of you, I'm sure, already know this to do three against two. That's the first one that you really want to internalize, okay? Because we're going to be doing some metric modulations and things like that that are going to require being able to feel things, quarter note, triplets, and being able to do three against two patterns. So simply you go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. That's a tricky pattern to get if you uh, haven't done it before. It'll take you probably a couple uh, couple tries to get, but but you'll get it. Anyways, that's all for now. Let's study this. I'm going to come back tomorrow, and we're going to talk about this metric modulation, which is essentially just superimposing a rhythm based on another subdivision of the beat against a specific pattern that would be if you're playing let's say in a straight four and you take a subdivision of a quarter note triplet and then superimpose a four beat based on the tempo of that subdivision it's really confusing but you'll get it this is the th kind of things that Vinnie Caliuta does okay those of you know that know Vinnie's playing and you can use these things in your uh, orchestrations as well, because you can do these between instruments. So I'm trying to show you how to use polyrhythms. That's why I did the piano example here. How to use these polyrhythms uh, in a melodic context, and also how to use these in a rhythmic context. So we can kind of learn two things at once. That's all for now. Please subscribe here to my Everything Music YouTube channel. And if you're interested in the Beato book, you can write me at rickbeato.com number one at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.